up knowing it. I love it when uh, things happen uh, very organically. And so uh, Janine and Brian kind of made a nice segue into what John and I will be talking about. And I should introduce John Smith Horn, who is um, a teacher in South Windsor at Timothy Edwards Middle School. He's done History Day for many years. And um, what we wanted to talk a little bit about today was uh, the, uh, the role of stakeholders. And I originally we talked about this as the parents' role in History Day, but with so many new teachers, I thought I should repeat something that I did at a, uh, a program a couple years ago since we have so many new folks. So I thought I'll get started with this and kind of give the, the um, History Day, you know, NHD rules. It's not um, a rules contest. That's right. Go ahead and tell them the rules. Yep, yeah, but I'll tell you the rules. Um, and then John can give the on the ground perspective um, about uh, our stakeholders that we work with. But Brian and Janine did a great setup because that's a really neat idea to do a Zoom um, meeting with your parents, and which I appreciate because one of the things we did hear from, survey, from our surveys was with parents that they felt like they weren't, they didn't know what History Day was and they were con you know, confused about things. Um, so this is just to hopefully help all of you as you work with um, parents. So in the History Day rule book, which um, I'm not yet at the point in the season that I can quote verbatim, I'll get there in a, a few months, but rule 10 says that a reasonable help, the student is responsible for the research design and creation of your entry, but they may have reasonable help from others. And that's a really important um, rule and I want to explain that because a couple gosh more than a couple years ago I was kind of horrified because I had a couple of teachers come to me very angry and they were angry because they thought it was unfair that teachers were helping their students and they didn't do anything for their students because that's what the rule said so we had a session gosh maybe it was pre-COVID so four or five years ago it went, in which I explained that a History Day project is like any other school project. I'm sure that Ian does not give an assignment and then say, okay, see you later. You know, you're coaching them, you're asking questions, you're giving feedback, and that is totally permissible for History Day. This is meant to be an academic program. You know, the contest is just the hook to, to you know, get the excitement and the enthusiasm and draw the students in. But the idea is that students are building skills through History Day. And so you, as their um, teachers, should be giving um, feedback, should be helping them through the, through the um, experience. So when I uh, heard that, we, we did a whole session about it. But the reasonable help, basically what it means is that the student is doing the research and analysis, they're um, um, designing and creating and editing their documentary, they're designing and creating their exhibit, they're doing, designing the costumes, they're creating and di designing websites. The students have to go out and conduct their, the oral interviews if they're doing any, and at the contest, the student has to set up the exhibit or the props for, for say, a performance. The student is the one who has to make the final decisions about whether to accept advice for edits to make on their projects, both from people before the contest or from the judges. A teacher provides guidance to students as they research and analyze the materials. When you're dealing with someone who is a sixth grader or a seventh grader, they need your help. They don't have the historical context. Um, it is totally permissible that you, the teacher, will demonstrate to students how to use Web Central, or you will help them by showing them how to use software to create a documentary. That is totally fine to train them and teach them that. What you can't do is do the documentary for them. Um, this t a teacher should review student work and offer edits or suggestions. Um, I think, I forget who I heard say this, it's been so many years, but it's basically one of the teacher's most important roles is asking questions. And I know that's probably the hardest thing with doing History Day is the fact that you could have 20 different projects in your classroom. Everyone today has offered such great ideas about, um, about ways to get others involved, whether it's an ELA colleague, a librarian, alumni of the program, there are ways to get other people in and doing that. And so a teacher should be asking questions throughout um, the whole experience. 
A trusted adult should be copied on email correspondence. I'm very aware of this. When I send an email to a student, I will copy you, the teacher, because they are a minor and I want an, another adult on it. Um, I, and, and I tease uh, students about this or teachers about this. I love History Day and anyone who knows me, even in off hours, I'm in my CHD or NHD something, but as much as I love History Day, I do not think that anyone should lose limbs to participate in History Day. So it is absolutely fine if you have a student who wants to do a wood you know, exhibit that mom or dad is the one operating the power tool. Please do so. Um, you know, it, I, this sounds very silly, but you know, you all know what reasonable help is. And then on contest day, since we're gonna be in person this year, yay, um, it's totally fine if you have a non-team member. Thank you so much. Um, if you have a non-team member carry in the exhibit, because some of the exhibits are six feet tall and they're huge. It's okay if you have mom and dad carried it into the exhibit hall and put it on the table. But from there, the kid needs to take over. And um, some of you who've been to nationals with me, you know, uh, regional uh, state coordinators have to help run the national contest. One of my favorite jobs over the years has been the exhibit hall monitor, in which I walk around and say, let the students set up their exhibit. Because <laughs> once they get it on the table, the kids have to do it. Mom and dad should not be arranging um, what it looks like. We're not gonna really talk about uh, registration too much uh, today. Um, we will open the registration system on uh, November the 15th, so we'll cover that at our next, uh, at our next uh, workshop. But we do ask par parents three questions on the registration um, uh, data. And it's basically things like permission to participate, media, and that the, um, the student did the project. This is something that we'll talk about a little bit further, but for some teachers, they may want to just copy and paste these questions, and I think we somewhere have a, a, a Word document with this. If you, some middle school teachers will register their students for them, but you might need to send this out as just a take home. You know, off the record, talk to your child about their topic, its relation to the theme and the sources that they're using. The more students are talking about what they're doing, oftentimes that's a great way to find a, a topic because family history comes up, or um, those are some of the best projects I've seen where there's a real family connection, or the parents are just helping them uh, brainstorm, that's totally fine. Um, help your child with time management and if a member of a group to contribute to that effort and pull their weight. Um, if you can, and I know not all parents can do this, but if a parent can, take your student someplace to research, to a museum, to a library, things like that. Review the general and category specific rules and offer support to your student. You all, I know, do great work out in the classroom. That's a lot on you though, when you have a bunch of students participating, so help getting the parents to help with that a little bit. And this is probably the most important one. Remind your child that the History Day experience about, is about much more than competition. We have those students every year who are very crushed when they don't win. The reality, the numbers of the contest are that right now we're close to 4,000 kids in Connecticut participate. And last year, you know how many represented Connecticut at the national, virtual national contest? Any guesses? Like 60? You're almost right, John. 61. Very good. John gets an A plus for today. Um, yes, yeah, 61 kids. So we're talking about statistics. But what you can encourage students with, and, and parents should encourage their kids with, the experiences that they're getting. Some of our kids who have never won have had incredible experiences. One of Cindy's students, um, who's won at the state level, but he and uh, Regina Lee from Vernon um, Schools were selected to go on uh, the Sacrifice for Freedom uh, Teacher Student Institute and got to go to Hawaii, where, and they went way in depth about World War II. Um, students will meet people, and they have lifelong experiences that, you know, I've been doing this long enough that my alumni come back, the kids who've been with us, and, and they tell me how this has been pivotal 
to their education and to their career. I just was walking through State House Square the other day in Hartford and this young man um, who was about six foot tall pulled down his mask and said, hi, Mrs. Tabor, it's me, TJ. And he was um, directing a movie in Hartford. Um, so, you know, this, it, it is really important to push that. And, you know, the, the thing I'll say is if questions come up about judging or anything about the process, those of you who know me know that you can come to me with a question and if there's any question about judging, I will look into it and I do due diligence. What the kind of the teacher and parents role is to just take the temperature down a little bit. Like we're gonna do what's right for the kids. We always err on the side of students are not, you know, if there's errors, we're not punishing students, we're on the student's side. But just taking it down a notch um, in terms of getting upset, um, because that's never nice. And, you know, things can be said that are not good. So, you know, it's really trying to encourage students to be, um, to be excited about the experience and what they're learning. And, you know, the other thing I would say is there's so many great um, experiences. If you're doing um, local history, so many places, like let's say you go to your local historical society, like you were saying, Ian, you know, a local library or a local museum would love to display those projects. I remember one year we had a couple of students do projects related to Carolyn Faraday, who helped get recognition for the women who were tested on at Ravensbrook during World War II. And uh, the Bellamy Faraday House displayed those exhibits throughout the summer. So there are some great experiences that don't have to do with winning a medal. They have to do with the experience. But um, hopefully this is just helpful in kind of explaining um, kind of where the delineations are in terms of, you know, appropriate help. The other thing, and I have copies of it with me. Um, oh, on the podium. So I'm going to pass these around. But um, these are actually stolen from Cindy. But we have, in the educator handbook, we have letters from, for parents that are just uh, suggestions to help you think about uh, communicating with parents. I love the idea that our parents and girl came up with in terms of Zooming with parents and having some kind of, um, having some kind of interaction with them on that. And um, the other thing is that encourage parents to take a look at our website because we have a lot of information about there. And if you have suggestions for our parents page, we'd love to hear them, you know, how we could improve it. And have them follow Facebook. We're on Facebook as well, both CHD and NHD. And that's also, I think, helpful to be able to kind of see what the, the, the program is and to understand what's going on. But we don't hide the rubrics. They're out there, they're public. Um, and so um, we really encourage you with that. So with that, that's kind of like, the, the um, mile high view and the rules, because it's not a contest about rules, but we had to tell you the rules. And I'm gonna turn it over okay. to my colleague, John. Really fast, I think the easiest thing you can do is, it's, it's the early and often, right? Talk to parents as early as you possibly can. My open house, from my, I'm a gifted and talented coordinator, my open house is the day before school starts. Mm -hmm. So it is, so, because I was a first grade teacher, so there you go, as the, as the start of my career, I was also a fifth grade teacher. And if you have open house, as you all know, a week into school, a parent is in your face, how are they doing? Seriously, I've had them in class for four days, you know, three days, you know, last week it was. So before school ever starts, here's the expectations. Here's what you're gonna be seeing from your child. And then regularly, just kind of giving them updates. Those, those timelines, those notebooks, that whatever it is that the parent has access to that so they can see their child's progress. That's awesome. I'm constantly keeping people updated on those types of pieces of information. Just very basic to the point. Here's kind of a range of where your child should be. Right, the what a parent should do. So this summer I fell off an extension ladder. Um, I'm fine, I'm standing here, it's all good. I would have loved to have had somebody hold the ladder at the bottom. And that's kind of the role of the parent. Um, I was home alone. Because you know, <laughs> I'm a gifted and talented teacher. I'm not gifted and talented, I just teach those kids. <laughs> um, and my wife came home and I looked a little disheveled and she said, what happened? And I said, I fell off the ladder. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> and move on. Yeah, having somebody hold on to that ladder for you, and again, I'm a middle school person, so driving your kid, right, to a, to a museum, to an archives, and I'll offer that as well to meet them there. 
um, public library on uh, there's a whole bunch of Saturdays I was at the public library meeting up with kids for a short period of time to look over their projects love the idea of Google Docs where you can and all kinds of other Google products where you could comment um, my student who went to nationals last year for her paper sent it to me right before she's submitting it would you just look it over one more time my English teacher already looked at it and I and I had two comments that her mother loved because part one was yuck. Um, that was the official, that's a technical term, I know, I'm sorry. Um, and then the end of it, she had this amazing cliche to wrap up her, her end of her, her piece and I wrote yuck, you know, the sequel. Um, just kind of a, you could probably rephrase that, you know, you could probably, but that's it, it's just a suggestion, right? There's never the idea that says, this is what you ought to do. You know, this is what you have to do. Um, the same thing for parents is I constantly tell parents, sure, you can have your child show you their project. I actually got an email today. Um, I got multiple communications from students. Um, uh, uh, Krista saw one of them that was, here's our top secret list. Don't show it to anyone. So we're going to talk about redundancy uh, when I get back to school next week with, with my group of students. Um, it's a list of topics that they're thinking about for History Day this year. Um, and then she sent an email to follow up to make sure I understood that this was top secret. And that includes our parents. Like, don't show our parents this information. So that just kind of makes me laugh. But as early as you can, as often as you can, I think is really important. And then really answer the questions for the, you know, the kids know that it's their project, that, that it's the science fair project, that, you know, mom did a great job you know, creating that mobile of the solar system. That's really impressive because that kid could barely glue anything on paper without gluing themselves to the paper. Um, or the, inner, and I've judged. I, I will tell you every single new teacher, go judge. Um, are you happy? I, and I didn't even <laughs> ask you to do that. I know. You just knew. It is the best. It's how I learned. Um, I've judged every category possible at junior and senior levels. Um, it's so helpful to judge, to get the perspective of seeing more than just your kids' projects. Um, I've judged at nationals, um, I think the past seven years. Yeah. And actually, um, that's something I do every year. I judge at nationals. And you see like fantastic projects from yeah. around the country and become an advocate for that kid's performance from Hawaii because that's the one you move ahead, right? It, it's, it's just an interesting kind of perspective, but I think it also gives it to the parent. And the last thing that I'll say is, um, a friend of mine who's an author, and I read all his stuff that he puts online on almost a daily basis, said he loves to win. And my brother read the same stuff and said, it's like the stupidest comment in the world. Everybody loves to win. And I kind of agree with that. But you know what? Exactly. That's not the end point of History Day. And I won't call it winning and losing. But there's great you know, opportunities for, for truly you know, having success. But at every level, because you know, in the in the bigger sense, I went to nationals for a couple of years, and one of the years, I think it was uh, Dr. Gordon, Kathy Gordon, um, said there are 600,000 students who entered History Day that year, and at nationals, there's a little over 3,000. And so, you know, it's that always you're all winners who are here, and everybody kind of like rolls their eyes and goes, "Please give me a break." Um, but it, that's amazing to get to nationals to realize wow, that's like a half of 1% of all the entries made it to nationals. Yeah, you are pretty much a winner at that stage of it. But the kid who, and I go back to one of my students who created an amazing documentary um, on an on a, on a individual in a specific Civil War battle and visited the site and talked to the, some of the National Park uh, uh, individual staff that was there who just embraced him you know, so, so beautifully, and we're so excited to see what he had done. Presents his project, doesn't win at regionals, but gets the opportunity to go a month later to the Civil War Museum that's in Rockville, Connecticut, in Vernon, Connecticut, and they invite him in to show his documentary to get lavish praise on him for his documentary. That should, and that's the other cool part is you find that other, that other place where you can kind of demonstrate and display and kind of show that off and give parents that perspective, right? Here's the other opportunity for your child. Here's a really cool thing that they did or the person that they met. I've had students meet Holocaust survivors and I've had students meet with like, you know, a heart surgeon and researchers 
you know, the clinical researchers on certain types of, you know, talked about this year, medical breakthroughs um, as a great frontier in history and other individuals that's just, this is pretty cool. Like I get to meet somebody. I had a student do a project on El Grasso a couple of years ago. And this is the last piece that I'll say is I have kids create, create uh, elevator speeches. You know, that 20 or 30 second speech about what your project's about because tell people about this. So I'm using a kid's elevator speech one day while I'm at a friend's house, basically to watch a football game on a Sunday. And I mentioned this and the guy sitting next to me says, did you know that I was the official photographer for Governor Grasso? No. Do you know I have pictures that were never ever published anywhere that's like still on, you know, like jump drives in my home? And I said, could my student email you? And that's the, that's the piece that a student's gonna email, a middle school student, they're not gonna email themselves. So it's the, can mom send an email that you compose, or can you compose the email, give it to me, and I'll send the text of what you're saying that I have a student who's interested in. That same student got to interview Susan Bicewich, um, who's the lieutenant governor, because she had written an entire book about Ella Grasso. Um, the, again, lieutenant governor was so gracious of the, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes on a Sunday, and I'll call you, which turned into a 45 minute conversation. Um, and, and then uh, Governor Grasso's son, Thomas, um, also came to my school and met with my student. Um, didn't go that far in terms of competition, but she got to meet the you know, lieutenant governor of the state, the son of the former governor, and got photographs from a guy who was the official photographer, had pictures of her at her inauguration with Governor Meskel, who was the outgoing governor of the state of Connecticut just a great experience. And I don't think that kid walked away going, I failed. Um, I don't think that was ever in there. And I don't think the parents felt that way either. So anyhow, there's my, there's my mom. And <laughs> you know, and just one thing I want to say about creating a culture of history day, because John's uh, classroom, I've had a couple of wonderful experiences in terms of the camaraderie of students that I remember one year when they had a, a group of students make nationals where the kids who didn't win, who weren't going to nationals, did volleyball um, yeah, fundraisers volleyball to help get the other kids to nationals. And then at nationals, a few years ago, your students who were doing um, a project on um, the Beecher family, and because um, it was a, a darling performance, they did a great job, but there were kids who showed up, I think they were from America, Samoa, yes. yeah. and they had been told incorrectly that, oh, props would be provided when you got there, so they had nothing. And John's kids were like, here, what can you use from ours? And you know, that's also creating a, a, a culture where some kids might win in your class, but it becomes a team effort, and that's, that's really important as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I know we've gone a teeny bit over, so, um, but I, I'm happy to stay and answer questions. Um, and um, we're here to help, but um, John, thank you for staying to the sure. very end to share that because, you know, I think- if Anybody it, who's new can contact me too. I'm as happy as could be that, you can come to my room too if you really want to. Chris has done that. <laughs> awesome. He is, and you know, He's, we call him our Uber judge because he judges everywhere. And I, I also judge at nationals because it's the only contest I am allowed to judge at um, and have time to really. But um, I do that every year because I feel like that keeps me honest. I see what other students are doing, but I also um, then can remember what it is like to judge and you know go through the experience. I feel like it keeps me a little bit honest with that. Well, thank you everyone. It's been such a great day to meet all of you. I hope it's been really helpful to you. We've tried to arrange it so that you had a chance to talk to each other and brainstorm and get some good ideas, but all of us are here to help for those of you who are new. So I will, um, we will pull together all the presentations. Probably you won't get it till Monday, but um, we'll send out an email so you can have everyone's email. But um, just thank you all for all that you do in the classroom. And please let us know how we can help you. We're happy to come out and do workshops. Make sure to grab materials. We have plenty so you can take. I think all of our folks who were from one school grabbed them. So grab what you need and please take some refreshments or like take dinner home to someone so food doesn't go to waste. But thank you all for a great afternoon, um, afternoon and day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.